Hello and welcome to The Represented. Represented is a new interview series of the Martin Center which focuses on presenting the ones who represent us here in the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Today with me I have two MEPs, one well-experienced a veteran, one could say, and one, uh, one new one, as the new parliament is consisted of two-thirds of new MEPs. We thought that it would be very nice to bring both together and to discuss how the new parliament will look like in the next five years to come. So first of all, thank you so much for uh, taking the time in such a busy day to, to sit down here with us. It's a pleasure. Yeah, nice to be it, here. It's a real pleasure. It's a, it's a pleasant break from a busy day. Indeed, I hope so. So my first question to break the ice would be, how do you say Europe in your own uh, languages? And what do you think of when I say the word Europe? Uh, Europe is almost like Europe in Slovak. It's Europa. Uh, you spell it almost the same way. And when you say Europe, you know, I say great, wonderful, more of it. In Dutch, it's Europa, so it's pretty much uh, the same. Um, and for me, it does two things. As a politician, I always say, you know, this is what we need uh, in order to also have a fair future for our children. But uh, personally, Europa for me was always a source of curiosity because I grew up close to the border and I always wanted to know what was on the other side. What piece of advice you could give as a well-experienced MEP to the new ones and what piece of advice you could bring as the fresh energy to the parliament for the old MEPs. So let's start. From. First of all, it's of course frustrated to be 44 years old and already being called a veteran, <laughs> you know, so this I first have to digest. But my piece of advice would be don't lose yourself in detail. Don't try to do everything because if you do everything, you do nothing much, you know, focus and choose your battles, pick your fights. Great. Uh by the way, I'm also 44. Ah, that we share. Uh, so, you but know, you're I'm not a, a veteran. I'm, a, I'm not a veteran. <laughs> I'm, I'm relatively new to politics, yeah. and I'm also new to this house. Uh, uh, and um, now, in terms of piece of advice, uh, I'm not sure. I've come to listen first uh, before I would advise the veterans here. Uh, but uh, since we outnumber the veterans in the house, so it might be advisable that the veterans also listen to us mm. when we speak up. And you need to keep us fresh. That's what you definitely need to do, yeah. Indeed. Speaking of this, what was the biggest issues you have focused on in uh, your campaign? Bearing in mind that you got re-elected, that you got elected as a fresh person. What were the biggest issues you focused on? The biggest issue, really broadly speaking, not to get lost in the details, mm -hmm. and I agree this is important, is to mobilize the people around the issue of more Europe uh, and the fact that we do need it. We do need it in Slovak politics, we do need it in Central Europe, we need it across Europe uh, because that's the only answer to the kinds of challenges we are facing and the kinds of challenges we are discussing even here today with uh, Ursula von der Leyen. That was pretty much the same in, in the Netherlands, although we're a founding member state. But I would say the main issue for us, where we also had a good middle-of-the-road story, not extreme, but also not turning a blind eye, was the climate. Uh, and this was a very big uh, part of uh, Ursula von der Leyen's speech as well. We owe it to the future generation. Uh, but as an EPP politician, we would say, yes, we need action, but in such a way that we take everybody along and that we don't create uh, losers and winners here. Um, so I did a bit of digging <laughs> <laughs> on both of you on social media and in general. And actually, besides the fact that you're both MEPs and that you're both 44, you, I believe, Ooh. share a similar passion. <laughs> so <laughs> I would ask uh, you to both explain what do this picture represents. Well, yours represent. is nice, I have it to say. It is a vintage case, isn't I, it? I, I, so, well, mine is as well, but yours looks better, actually, better shape, but vintage well, tractors Mine, mine was a part of an exhibit. It was an outdoor exhibit. This is actually in the uh, winemaking town of Modra, outside of Bratislava, and I spent the whole day uh, tasting wines and actually discussing um, European politics with uh, different winemakers. So this is really a fun picture from a uh, uh, show which was taking place, but clearly we do have tractors across the member states, and <laughs> That only indicates we have the we face the, the, the same issues both in the Netherlands and in Slovakia in terms of the policy challenges we yeah, have to deal with. Yeah, but I'm so jealous though because we're not a wine producing country, mm -hmm. we're only a consumption country, you know. <laughs> and in some areas we have some wine that is getting better and better, also because the climate is changing. Um, but this picture is taken um, because, I mean, 
the, the countryside, I agree, I agree with you, is so important that Europe is not only there for the people who have three university degrees and live in cities. We have to bring everyone along. This is really an EPP thing. Uh, and this photo um, is made when we had a severe case of intimidation of farmers um, in the Netherlands by animal rights activists who occupied the pig farm. Uh, and the pigs were stressed and all of that. I mean, and this is really creating more tension between countryside and city, and that's what you don't need. So this, the other woman on the picture, she is a regional politician from my mm -hmm. party, but she's also a farmer, and she started this action that said, you know, act normal. Of course you can disagree, but you don't just enter somebody's farm and stress their animals. Behave responsibly. Do us normal in Dutch. Quick question. Which MEP would you participate in, uh, would you invite to participate in a bake-off with you? As we followed you on Instagram and we saw that you're quite into baking. Uh, maybe I would choose two people from our group. I would choose Mairead McGuinness because I think she would be a great cook. I think I can learn uh, from her. And I would choose um, maybe Antonio Tajani because he's from Italy and I want to do more Italian cooking. And I don't know how much of a cook he is, but I'm quite sure he can give me some advice. Uh, which MEP would you share a Borovicka with? That's a good one. It's a national drink in Slovakia. It's hard liquor. Uh, I don't drink it very often, so it would be a special occasion. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's always important to really not only work across the aisles in a parliament like this to get uh, agreements, but also to reach out to people from other regions and countries. And I must say I had a, a wonderful time uh, a few weeks ago when uh, Paulo Rangel, a Portuguese MEP, was on a fact-finding mission in Slovakia. Uh, to discuss the future of my own party and uh, we had a really good time we had a hard time leaving the restaurant very late at night so the one thing we didn't do with Paolo was uh, have a uh, shot of Borovička so next time when we meet uh, that's what I do nice now the choices questions basically broaden or deepen the union I don't think you can do the one without the other. I think every time we've had in the past a big deepening of, of the European Union, it's been accompanied by, uh, by widening or broadening. Ever since the first enlargement in the 1970s, and of course uh, the Big Bang enlargement in 2004 has been accompanied by some deep reforms and changes to the institutional structure of the EU, but also to the policy making of the EU. So I don't think you can do the one without the other. And uh, my uh, personal uh, wish is that uh, throughout the next five years we have a real perspective for broadening the European Union. The last commission wasn't the one uh, which would uh, push for enlargement. I know this is not a popular policy issue at the moment but we've made some big promises to countries in the Western Balkans uh, and we have one big country leaving the European Union unfortunately I must say uh, but I'd like to be at 20, 28 again uh, by 2024 so uh, let's hope we can have uh, broadening and some widening of the Union in the next five years. Speed skating or football? Ah, well, I mean, I'm a horrible skater myself, so I would have to say football. Although, you know, in the spirit of my late grandmother, who was in her 80s, when she was sitting in her chair watching these great Dutch guys doing the speed uh, skating championships, yes. and she said, oh, I love watching these guys in these tight suits <laughs> do, do their skating. And, you know, in her honor, she passed away a couple of years ago, but in her honor, I hope to be like that when I'm 80. <laughs> Definitely. And now the question, who is more likely to do something? You have two papers in front of you, both containing your names. And so tell me, please, who is more likely to have a better coffee in their office? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a good story. Very, very modest of you, I must <laughs> notice. No, the thing is, you know, I have a half Italian assistant, so, you know, my coffee, everybody thinks Dutch coffee, uh, but, you know, my coffee is actually pretty Italian, so it's quite good. <laughs> I have a love for coffee, so... We'll have to test it. Yeah, we'll have to uh, go on coffee dates. Uh, I hope I will in be invited. Offices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is more likely to put more amendments on a policy proposal? <laughs> it feels like you strategized a bit. No, we didn't. No. We didn't. No. But after my advice to focus, I think he listened yeah, too yeah. much, you know, so he's already <laughs> made it, making his choice. Thank you so much for taking the time, and I hope that we will uh, see you in some other events that the Martin Center organizes. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. And it was nice to meet you. Nice meeting yeah. you.